So guys, your <laughs> amazing, beautiful charm vegan has made it. Oops, it's dark in here. To the destination for today in Oslo for tonight. I'm feeling really, really good. I'm feeling so relaxed. I'm so ready to eat. So I'm gonna smash out my watermelon and some bread and <laughs> and like some other little bits and bobs. I have like tomatoes, I have a cucumber, I even managed to get some peanut butter. Oh my god, I haven't had peanut butter in so long. And that is what like one of the regular foods I eat on these trips. So I've been actually like, my body's like, hmm, where's my peanut butter? We usually have peanut butter. It gives us loads and loads of energy on these things. All right, so I'm feeling really, really good. The rain was crazy and it got like so cold. I felt like it was just so cold as well and wet. So I was like wearing layers upon layers all of a sudden compared to like really, really warm day. So everything is washing, as you can hear. Everything is being washed right now. And I'm just so happy to just relax and do some work on videos for you guys smashing some food and like fully totally enjoy it and hang out with my epic awesome host for tonight something i want to point out i like there's like how do you call it like the do you know the pattern the patterny wallpaper this reminds me of russia so much so do like rugs on the floor this little rug type thing this is like from maybe like more Turkish, but also very uh, Russian. And this really, really cool lamp. Check out how epic. Oh, so cool. Hmm. Roald Amundsen was a Norwegian explorer. He lived from 1872 to 1928. And he basically is most known for his expeditions to the poles, north and south. As the leader of the Antarctic expedition in 1910 to 12, which was the first to reach the South Pole on December 14, 1911, he was a key expedition leader during the heroic age of Antarctic exploration. In 1926, he was the first expedition leader for the air expedition to the North Pole, making him the first per person in the world to reach both poles. He's also known for having first expeditions to traverse the Northwest Passage in the Arctic. So this guy obviously is very, very well known in the Norwegian kind of society and really globally. And here you can see him visiting where he lived. He adopted a couple of kids, so we will see a reference to them in the house as well that we're visiting. This is where he lived, this is where he kind of grew old, where he kept his children while he was away on his expeditions. And next you will hear a discussion between me and my friend about him and some tactics and techniques he used during his explorations. Some he was uh, unmarried, no kids, and uh, it seemed like those kids would be die if, he, if uh, they were left. He yeah. adopted them, and he took them home with them. So he had to have a home, uh, so that uh, he could uh, put the girls there and uh, hire a nanny and stuff. So uh, you know they lived there, and while he kind of uh, when he come back, he planned his expeditions from this house, and at the same time his two Inuit girls could uh, live and have an education and everything. Uh -huh. So that's why he had this house as a base. So, you know, some of the biggest uh, polar expeditions in the world have been planned from this house. Mm. Well, uh, people say that he was a very kind man, and you know, because of his the Inuit thing, he was an explorer, he was a hero. But people are also bothered by the, his, some of his tactics, especially in the critical modern history, where they say he uh, was abusive to animals, he's a uh, like he's been doing a morning swim. He uh, used animals, uh, doggies, he, in his strips, uh, and uh, he uh, used uh, them as spot uh, as uh, to pull the, the wagons, but also them as uh, the food. And mm. he would uh, eat them, and also that's also how he kept the other dogs alive. He would chop up doggies and you know cannibalism for the doggies. Yeah. 
So uh, it's not a criticism of that. But they also say like that is the main reason why he made all these expeditions because his his opponents they were bringing trucks with them, you know, to South Pole in the yeah. 1910s, you know, and the truck would break down after literally two hours, and that was it. And they would bring horses with them. The horses would die after two days. So you know, this was the way, only way you could do it. So you know, it's a conflicted uh, yeah. uh, legacy, but uh, nonetheless. Uh, you know, when you compare historical figures, how gruesome they often were, uh, people forgive Raw for uh, his indiscretions, yes. That's the statue. Uh, it's very ironic, the statue is old, but it's with the dog. So you guys, we are in the place where Roald Amundsen... Uh, Jim. I'm so sorry, I don't know how to fault we say. But anyway, it's this guy's house. <laughs> And he was uh, one of the famous Norwegian pole explorers. And we'll just go quickly and have a look at the um, sculpture. <laughs> sculpture. It's so beautiful here in Norway. We're just outside of Oslo. <sighs> it's warm. But it's very fresh. And we're by the lake, as you can see over there. Absolutely stunning. Love it when he was uh, going on a rescue mission to find some other polo explorer he went on an airplane with a german and an italian oh. and the airplane uh, disappeared over the barrier and uh no one knows never found any kind of remains so it's uh, been the source of a lot of conspiracy theories that uh, he didn't really die he didn't crash but like he wanted to get away from the fame and everything so uh, you know because yeah. that was, he was like the, the man of the hour so yeah. That was his way of uh, disappearing in, uh, into the wild. Having a quiet life when he's older. Yeah. Always searching for more? Always, uh, always uh, going towards the next goal. Ah, always going towards the next goal. <laughs> Very cool. This is Roald Amundsen's house, and then it's our female soccer team, which is uh, the best in Norway. And oh, yeah. the Norwegian female soccer team is one of the best in the world. Oh, and yeah. wins the World Cup and stuff. Mm -hmm. They are actually some of the best female players in the world. Yeah. Cool.
they put this all up uh, last week when they told the video was done. Do you hear? Do you hear this floor? It's so funny. It makes so much noise. But it makes me feel like I'm in like a Russian country house. Something like that. Alright, now I'm just trying to find a way. There's like... Oh, look it up. It's as if we're in Japan. It's always sent Japan's face. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> How are you today? How is everything on your corner of the world? I'm staying in this really, really cool apartment in Norway. No, it doesn't just do that. It's okay, never mind. Just waiting for the lift now. I'm pretty hungry. I woke up and just before I'm gonna go get some food. My host for tonight and for like yesterday, last night lives like uh, some apartment buildings that are attached to the mall so I am um, basically it but it's it's pretty cool there's a lake next to it and there's you know windows and things like that so it'll be really really cool we're gonna go paddle boarding in a little bit just to check out something different I would love to go explore Oslo but also there's a very very like boom thumping thing also I've never gone out of this uh, building, so I'm just learning how to do that. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of water in the front. They're probably just clinging. Oh, there is a little entryway. So, yeah, like, oh, so cool, so interesting. Eh? Like, I would love to go visit Oslo and check out Oslo today. But I'm also meeting some people and going on a road trip to Troll Tunnel tomorrow. And then it just like works out that I will leave almost like straight after Troll Tunnel. But and I won't explore like I won't I will I will I won't have enough time to do another hike. But what I will have time for is to explore Oslo a little bit and ride around here. So we're going to do that instead. Not really instead, but I will do that. Yeah, I guess instead of. But Shul Tana should be really, really cool. Do you reckon I can get in here? I don't know. I'm just looking. I don't know. Oh, look, it lets me in. Interesting. Alright, so everything's going pretty good. I am pretty keen on some food, so I'm going to go find some. Oh, I don't know if this is the right way. Look, I'm some sort of exit. All right, I'm gonna focus on walking and finding food. I'll get you in a little bit. I don't think there are any, or rather I think it'll be pretty easy to find food, vegan food, the Oslo, she looks at. The other side is the spot where Look. 
and cute, but... Oh, is yeah, that's a vegan. It's pretty cool. Chipotle, vegan milk, vegan cheeses. to Germany or Denmark, like uh, recent? Uh, no, it's like, yeah, pretty recent, like 10, 20 years, 20 years ago or something. And then, uh, yeah, fire started and a lot of people uh, died. Yeah, 159 people died. And there was a lot of uh, a lot of like uh, controversy on the times and how it started and how it really started and uh, who was to blame and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the survivors who uh, gather the money to raise this money. Wow, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, cool. it's touching, huh? Mm -hmm. it's with the baby and the child. Yeah, I think like that guy who was sentenced to the for causing the accident or the fire, I think they fought, acquitted him and then they found someone else and it's like the drama. Wow. Is, it's still today. It's uh, almost thirty years ago. So it's like don't know back and forth about the drama. No. Yeah, like I mean, surely it's not like someone. It wasn't on purpose. Wouldn't have been on purpose, right? Yeah, I guess that's probably what. To Punish me for uh, trying to broker a peace with uh, Ukraine. This guy is, uh, uh, he was the leader of the, uh, uh, like the bicycle gang in, uh, in uh, North gang. during the war. Uh, he's, a, he's a resistance gang. hero. Yeah. He's like our primary hero because not not only did he, what is he, one of the you know primary figures of Nazism during the war and leading the sabotage operation against the Nazis, after the war, he uh, kept working for against extremism, you know, talking in schools and stuff, for the rest mm. of his life. And he died at, like 95 years old, just uh, maybe 10 years ago. Oh, so until the cool. end of his life, he was always preaching against, you know, against hate and against uh, Nazism and extremism and warning against it. And you know, you know, like a lot of like war heroes, they after the war they become uh, alcoholists and uh, drunkards and uh, you know, become uh, anti heroes. This guy was just a hero from A to Z, his entire life, his Come. entire 95 year old life. Come. This is a copy of that statue. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Fearless. Yeah, it's the same statue, I don't know how they moved it. <laughs> 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 
International Women's Day and it's like it's actually in front of the ball. Hmm. No, but I know International oh. Women's Day. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yes, it's very fitting that you have two strong Ah, women, women standing, standing next to a fellas <laughs> <strong>, uh, <laughs> girl. <laughs> uh. evening even though it's crazy bright light outside it's been pretty cool I've learned a lot of different things been to a really cool different places that you'll see it all obviously like in the vlog you get to see all the different things learned a bit about Oslo history and everything else that is relevant to that the politics the army just the life here so it's pretty cool pretty interesting maybe I'll do a big uh, sit down chat video thing which, like, I just feel like I have so much information about all this stuff right now. I need to uh, remember it all. And I'm just quickly gonna go grab some bread for sandwiches for tomorrow because we are we have our long, like, five or six hour drive to Troll Tonga, and then we'll be staying there for a couple of nights for the hike. But I just want to be a bit prepared, have some food ready, and stuff like that. And yeah, happy days. Maybe I'll get some um, like vegan burger, meat thing, or like, no, not meat, you know, fake meat, or like some sort of veggie patties or something like that, a falafel, just to have that with and go from there. It's been pretty, pretty interesting, pretty, pretty rad place. Lots of uh, different things going on really really good vegan food as well and just yeah I think I'm uh should get an early night tonight let's get some bread I'm packed 
in the evening all the bread baked today is 30% off and there is like a little cutting machine thing 